Welcome to Ash Chess Arts. So today I'm gonna do yet another A to C challenge. This time it's about films that I love but I don't own yet. And some of these I actually couldn't even own if I had all the money in the world because some of these haven't been released on Blu-ray or even DVD I think so. Yeah, which is pretty pretty sad but hopefully one day. But a couple of disclaimers before we start. One thing is that I'm gonna leave links to some of these films down below because some of them are actually on YouTube so if you want to watch any of these you can see the links in the description and go watch them because lots of these types of films are actually on YouTube which is really cool and that's in many cases the way I watch them myself yeah but look out for those and also one more disclaimer is that I tried to only pick I like world cinema films just like Solitary Ronin films did with one of his A2C challenges that he wanted to highlight films that weren't English language films and I'm gonna do that here but I think with one of the letters I had to pick a film that is American but that's actually an American film that some of it is some of it was shot overseas as well so yeah yeah uh, many of these are pretty unknown films, but some of them are like big world cinema classics as well. But let's get on with it, finally. So the first one is Kim ki Three Iron from 2004. So this film is one of my absolute favorite ones. So this I actually remember because this one I have watched twice and I watched it again during the summer and I still loved it so much. It has such a great score. And it's about this young guy who has kind of this weird life. He actually goes to like random people's apartments and takes pictures there and hangs out there. And like he just keeps doing that. But one one day he goes to an apartment where he sees this woman who has a very toxic husband and he actually kind of rescues this woman from the husband and then they become a duo and do the same stuff again but that has a very weird plot and it actually has great life lessons i think and i think it's really crazy i think this film was shot in like three weeks or something but it looks absolutely beautiful it has great performances again okay, the score is great and everything about it is great it really has that kind of atmosphere that kind of really really pulls you in and yeah this was one of those films where i had a uh, what I call a film truck experience so that the film really completely enthralled me and I was just completely in love with every second of it and I still had the same experience on my second watch and when I finally do my top 50 whenever that is I'm gonna feature this film there this is actually my number one favorite South Korean film and that's saying a lot considering there's been lots of great films from that country but yeah, I think this is Kim Kiduk's masterpiece. I've seen few of his films, not nowhere near all of them, but quite a few. Yeah, but this one is one that I would re definitely highly recommend. Yeah, but let's move on. So the next film I've actually also seen few times, it's Ariel by Aki Kaurismäki. So this is a Finnish film. The second part of the Proletariat trilogy it is from the late 80s. And it's about this again working class guy who has pretty pretty shitty life but he falls in love with a woman the woman has a son but then this guy when he actually because he gets beaten up in the beginning of the movie but then he just randomly stumbles onto the guy who beat him or one of the guys who beat him then he beats that guy who be beat him but then the police come and then he goes to jail but he escapes the jail as well and but those are the kind of things that happen in this movie but it actually feels very Bressonian in many ways like the prison stuff like goes back to a man escaped which is a masterpiece Bresson film but yeah this has all the great charismatic elements from the deadpan humor that kind of weird emotional connection that you have to the film great characters minimalist style Matti Pellon pääsö, murderer, uh, who's 
been in the prison for quite a while and yeah but it's a great Kaurus Mäki film, one of my favorites and there's one Aki Kaurus Mäki interview in YouTube where he said that Ariel might be the best thing he ever did and and I wouldn't necessarily argue against it even though there are a couple of his other films that I think might be even better yeah but I've seen this three times and every single time it blew me away yeah then we have one of the best first time watches this year for me it's this very big famous 80s French art house film Petit Blue and I watched the longer cut which was about three hours long I think but this is another film truck <laughs> experience for me like I just absolutely love this film from start to finish like it has some of the most gorgeous cinematography I've ever seen again it's almost Paris Texas level I mean this came out I think two years after Paris Texas like all that kind of colors in it the angles the methodical style I just absolutely love that and it, it has killer performances from the actors like the main female performances sight to behold it's really great and it's really interesting to see where that character goes from the beginning to the end yeah like that's a very interesting character actually and it's a really great interesting portrayal of mental illness i think uh but i i really love this film it's actually quite funny in places but also very tragic in places but it kind of mixes those tones really well and yeah i really need to get this one on blu-ray there are a couple of european regular blu-rays and then there's the criterion one although i'm kind of thinking that because this is quite a very famous and popular film still to this day i think uh this might get a 4k release down the line from criterion or someone else so i'm kind of a bit wary whether i should get it now or whether i should wait but the european blu-rays here are actually quite quite cheap so i wouldn't like miss that much even if i had to upgrade it down the line or something yeah but what a, what a great film and actually really weird that it took me this long to watch it because usually i'm pretty good with watching these really big kind of art house classics but this was one that took me ages to watch it but i'm really really glad that i finally did and it completely blew me away and this won't be on my top 50 list because Again, I've only seen it once and I don't want to rewatch it yet, but I want to have some time between the watches. But I think that this could actually eventually be on my top 50 because I, I loved it so much. And I hope that it I hope that I will have a similar experience uh, when I watched it. When I watch it again sometime. Yeah. Then we have another big favorite of mine, it's City of Pirates by Raul Ruiz. And when I did that video that if I had my own Blu-ray label, I actually was punching myself after doing it because I didn't mention that I would love to release Raul Ruiz films because he's one of those directors who is such a great author but his films haven't really been released on Blu-ray and sometimes even on DVD and I'm not sure what's the case with this one but it hasn't been released on Blu-ray but this one actually you can find on YouTube so this is the this is probably the one film that if you had to if I had to recommend one film to you from this video go go watch this one. Although it's a very challenging film because it's it's one of those non-narrative films. So you really kind of the beauty of this film just comes from the beautiful images and the very interesting visual style. But if you are expecting like a plot or a story or characters, yeah, maybe this isn't for you. I mean, you have characters here, and I guess if you watch this film like 10 times and I try to decipher is there any kind of plot here or what the kind of message is here, I think maybe you could come up with something. But I've watched this twice now, and I don't really like get a, like a huge kind of themes from it or a plot from it, but I just really enjoy the experience with the very experimental, beautiful style and the mood that it creates. I really love these kind of non-narrative films, but I know that they are the niche of the niche. So you might not like it, which is okay, of course. We don't have to like the same things, but I do really love these types of stuff. And you will actually see probably at least a couple of these non-narrative films on my top 50. Yeah. But let's move on. 
So the next one is a Pelatar film. Uh, okay, starting with the letter D, and it's Damnation. So this actually is my favorite Pelatar film, not Satan Tango, which is a great film, obviously. But I, I connected to Damnation more. Like I really love the beginning. Okay, and I'm not sure I can explain it in English, but if you have seen the film, you know what I mean. But the fucking sound design in that and the fucking like very depressing black and white look to it. I, I just I'm just all about that. All about that stuff. And the whole film, like I just really love how it's shot and how the the sound design is like on David Lynch level here. It kinda the, even the sound design like creates the like great mood for this film and the cinematography. I don't really remember that much about the plot itself. I mean Bellatar films aren't necessarily like really heavy on some kind of big plot or anything, but there was some type of plot here, I think. <laughs> yeah. Again, sorry, sorry about my bad memory. But the thing that blew me away that I remember that it wasn't anything relating to the plot or characters, but it was the visuals and the sound. Yeah. Yeah. But what a great film. Again, I would highly recommend it. I think this got like a Blu-ray on the US by Arbelos Films, who also released Satan Tango. And that Blu-ray has like one of my favorite cover art ever. And as I love this film, I would love to get that Blu-ray, but, but we'll see. I usually prefer not to import from the US. I, I have done it a few times because I have a region-free player, but preferably I'm usually not gonna do that. And because this film might got like a UK release by maybe Artificial Eye or someone else. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. So the next one is a Swedish film by Jan Troel. It's The Emigrants. So letter E, Emigrants. So this is on Criterion, and it's about this poor kind of farmer, Swedish people, back when many Europeans moved to the US, and they want to move to the US. That's why the title of the film is The Emigrants. And in the end we see them arrive at the US. Uh, they go by boat or ship, of course. But this is just a good a film about that, it feels fairly realistic and I think if you are interested in that kind of part of history, I think this film would be a great companion to learn more about it, even though it's obviously at the same time a fiction film. And you have Liv Ullmann here, you have Max von Sydow. So you might think that this is actually a Bergman film, even though it isn't. Yeah. But a masterpiece of a film. And the second part, The New Land, is also great and I'm pretty sure actually Oh, I didn't actually go with it here, but but I could have gone with that. And the next part is like all about when they are in the US. And you should watch both of them because they are part of the same story and both of them are on the same level. Yeah, great stuff, great stuff. This isn't something that I would like rewatch like every year or anything like that, but but these are magnificent pieces of art. Yeah. Then we have uh, Eric Rome film. Four Adventures of Rainet and Mirabelle. So this is one of the maybe a bit more unknown Rome films. I don't think this is this is on Blu-ray anywhere. But this story is about these two young women who become friends, and then this is divided into I think it was five vignettes maybe or six. I don't remember exactly. But in all of the vignettes we see these friends doing something. Like one of them was about. I think this one of these women was, was trying to sell some of her art because she's a painter. Like I remember that one. Then there was this one, I think, which was all about like like trying to beg for people for money or something. And then there was this one on a cafe, I think. Uh, but again, I don't remember everything exactly. But this was a film that I found really charming. And uh, as always with Rome, the film was really, again, great at exploring this friendship. Again, Rome is a master of exploring relationships and exploring characters, I think. And I, I really enjoyed the fuck out of this, and this would be on my list to, like, please Criterion or BFI or someone else, please release this, release this film. I watched it on, like, kind of a DVD print online, which looked fine, but it could look way better. Yeah. 
but a great film again if you are into French films. I would highly recommend you this one. Yeah. Then we have a Japanese film. It's, a, it's been quite a while since I watched this, so I don't remember that much about it, but it's beginning with the letter G, it's Go Go Second Time Virgin by Kochi Wakamatsu. So Wakamatsu is one of the important names of the kind of Japanese new wave. So this is a very kind of quite a way violent, quite a way insane graphic film and all about kind of I would say nihilism. It's quite a very short film. I think it's only just up above hour long. But it's that typical very challenging, very out there, quite dark kind of uh, Japanese new wave stuff, which explores these, explores these kind of taboo topics. But I remember I re really loved this one because I, I'm a big fan of Japanese new wave. Akio Isoji, Kichu Yoshida, Shuchi Terayama, some of Oshima stuff, and this one. And I need to watch more Wakamatsu. Again, they, they have such a poor availability in the West, so you might have a hard time finding this anywhere. Yeah. But check, check the links down below. Again, I, I don't remember whether this one is on YouTube or not, but yeah. The next one is one that I watched fairly recently. It's called Haru. It's a Japanese film from 1996, and it's about these people who actually are in this film forum online. And obviously because this was the mid-90s, internet uh, was in its early stages, so it's quite different from what we have these days. But I think any cinephile could really relate to this, and I really related to this film, and I got actually really emotional when I watched this, and I really loved this film. Because then in the film forum you have this man and a woman, and they're gonna develop a deeper relationship in that film forum. And we see them like go with their daily lives, but also then messaging each other and they kind of lie to each other. Sometimes they tell the truth. And it's very interesting how that kind of online relationship goes there. And it actually feels like a very accurate portrayal still to this day, even though this film is 26 years old. But these two people, again, they develop a very deep relationship, but I'm not gonna spoil whether they actually meet in the film or whether they whether they um, become like lovers or anything because that would spoil the whole film. But um, but yeah, this is again a film that I really relate to because again I met my friend Isaac through kind of online film discussion and we've had a great relationship for over three and a half years now. So that's kind of how, how I relate to it because I've had this kind of similar experience of meeting a great friend online and how this kind of online relationships can really work as well even though I think many people are skeptical about them and I've been very skeptical about them because I've had bad experiences with them as well but but I met Isaac through it which was which was great because yeah because Isaac and me like lots of the same things have great conversations and have great fun together yeah but this one I would truly recommend to you people. And this one is actually on YouTube on 7020p with English subtitles. So it's actually pretty good print. So please go watch this one. I think you would like it, especially if you are into Japanese cinema. Yeah. Then we have an Italian classic by Dino Risi. It's Il Sorpasso. Yeah. So this is a film that was really hyped by, I think, Martin Scorsese as well. So if that says something to you, then go watch this film. Uh, but it's about these two guys. One of them is a law student and this other guy is a bit older, but they kind of go to this road trip. And this is all about, again, life, whether you should live it to the fullest with all the kind of with taking like lots of risks and stuff. Whether it's better to do that than maybe die young, than just live a very safe life and live old. That's like the kind of surface level theme about it. But it's a really fun, fun movie. It's fun movie. It's probably could be the best road movie ever made. Yeah, it's an Italian masterpiece. And I think again, many people love it these days. But I think it should be kind of up there with. All the other big Italian classics like Eight and a Half, La Notte, and 
uh, tuolta Visconti stuff as like being considered as one of the great achievements of Italian cinema. But this is on criteria now. Sadly, again, I don't own it yet, but I really want to own it. We'll see it if it comes to the UK criterion someday, and even if it doesn't, I'll, I'll probably import it at some point from the US. But I could see this coming to the UK because it hasn't been released by any, anyone else either, so yeah. Yeah, let's move on. So then the letter J, this is actually a film I haven't seen in a very long time, but it's Joint Security Area, JSA by Park Chan Wook, one of my favorite kind of directors working today. Again, I'm really excited to watch Decision to Leave, which is his new film that is apparently very good. But this is about the kind of border in North Korea and South Korea, people working there and the relationships there and the conflict there. So it's a very, very interesting like place to have a film. And of course, it's still relevant to the, today because the situation there hasn't changed. So yeah, you can kind of watch this to have a good understanding or better understanding of that situation. Of course, this is a fiction film, but still, I think it's like a good, good movie to check out if you are interested in the in North Korea, South Korea divide. Yeah, but it's actually very, it has very interesting characters, very relatable characters that you really feel for. And again, it's just when you watch this, you start to think that again, that why cannot people just, why cannot we just uh, exist together and why, why we always have to hate each other and stuff like that, even though we are all humans. Yeah, that's pretty much what Solitary Rowling also said when he, I think he had this film on his uh, list as well. Yeah. Then we have a Alexi German film for the letter K. It's Crystal of My Car. And this is on Arrow Academy. Uh, so this one I actually I'm I'm gonna get and I've almost bought it a couple of times, but yeah. So we actually talked about Hard to Be a God, which is a, a other film by this director in the Ronnie Nazarin talk podcast, and I actually recommended this film to the two Scots. I think both of them own it, but they haven't watched it yet. But this is quite different from Hard to Be a God. It's like it's really hard to kind of like uh, decipher like what what is this film about? Like I had no idea when I was watching it. It has a very weird weird structure, very weird plot, very weird characters. Everything about it is like odd and bizarre. But it has this kind of uh, weird just atmosphere that again pulls you in even though you don't like understand what, what is going on. Or at least I didn't. I remember, the, I think this is a very long film as well. I think two and a half hours at least. And they actually speak a bit of Finnish in this one, which I was like, what the fuck they are talking, about, talking in Finnish? I think that person was counting numbers in Finnish or something like that in this like dark street. And this film, even though it's from the late 90s, this is in black and white, but it looks beautiful. And yeah, Alexi Sherman had a great career. I've seen three, three of his films, all of them really good. And I need to watch the other ones as well. I know that my friend Isaac has seen all of them and he liked all of them, I think. So yeah, so they are available there, even though they aren't on Blu-ray, all of them. So yeah. Then we have La Belle Noiseuse by Jacques Rivet. Um, so this is, again, a very long film. I think the longest cut of it is four hours at least, or around four hours, it might have been more. And this at least used to be on YouTube, so if it's on the links down below, it will be on YouTube, but if not, then not. But this film is all about the artistic process. It has Emmanuel Bert. Sorry about the poor pronunciation, but she is one of my favorite actresses, and she is such a stunning, stunning woman, and again, such a great actress. But she is this model in this film, and there's this older painter guy painting him, painting her throughout the film, and it, we see that kind of artistic process from the beginning to the end, and and it's yeah, it's very interesting exploration of that, and I think all of us art lovers can really appreciate these kinds of films that really go in depth with the artistic process and you can learn a lot about art if you watch this film 
And this is one of my favorite Chuck Rivet films. I'm a big fan of the guy. Obviously, I've been trying to champion him throughout the last couple of years on on YouTube. Um, yeah, because I think again, like I said on another video, that he's the guy who should be talked about every day of the week because he's so amazing. Yeah. But this film again, one of his best, and this isn't as cryptic and complex as some of his other films, but but it's definitely complex in terms of the themes about art, yeah, about being creative, yeah. And I guess there's a bit of that male gaze in there as well, because we see this old guy painting this young beautiful woman too, yeah. Then another long French film which has actually just been restored on 4K which I'm really fucking excited about because this only had bad prints but this is on YouTube or at least used to be but it's a very bad print so maybe you should wait for the 4K one and I'm actually gonna wait for the 4K restoration to watch this again and apparently this should be coming on Criterion and it's The Mother and the Whore by Sean Eustache I think Channel's Films and Criterion have gotten the rights for all the Sean Eustace films, which made me so happy when I heard about it because this was pretty much like my I would say number one or at least top three films that I would like to see on Criterion so I'm like really fucking happy and I can't wait for them to announce this or maybe they will do like a Sean Eustace box set because they have rights for all of them and I have, haven't seen the others so I'm really excited if they do that yeah but this is one of those Again, dialogue, character heavy, French films where not much happens. But it's about again this guy who's kind of this pseudo intellectual, he spouts all this kind of bullshit, which is very interesting. And I, I love that kind of side of French cinema and French culture. And he's played by Jean Pierre Lude, one of my top 10 actors. And, in a, and he's in a great role here. The film is in black and white. Okay, it's shot pretty well, but it's not like in any kind of flashy way. But it's again all about the conversations, all about the characters, all about that kind of hedonism and also a bit of that nihilism there. Yeah, but what a, what a great film. I remember I fucking loved this film when I watched it and can't wait to rewatch it when it comes on 4K. And this film obviously is it's like a really big French classic even though the availability of it is dog shit. Yeah. So the next one is the film that is an American film. It's Night on Earth by Jim Charmus. So obviously this is consists of five vignettes where we see different taxi drivers and their kind of nights. So two of them are in the US, one is in New York, one is in Los Angeles. The Los Angeles one is actually my least favorite of the weeknights. The, all the other ones I actually love, but the first one I wasn't a big fan of. Then we go into Rome and Paris and then Helsinki, Finland with Gauris Mackie regular. So I love that part the most, but I really love the Italian part and the Paris and New York part, parts were really good. Yeah. But I think this film is kind of all about human connection and kind of somewhat normal and mundane kind of human problems. Although some of them kind of go kind of more over the top as well, in a very funny and interesting way. And in at the Helsinki one is the really kind of tragic one out of this. But this is actually my favorite Jim Charmus film. I really love this one. I think it was released in the UK by Soda Pictures, but I was actually going to get that set, but then it got out of print sadly. So I don't own this yet. I had a, had a chance to own it, but I didn't pull the trigger early enough. But this is on US Criterion, so I'll probably get that one if it if nobody brings it to the UK. But maybe now that the soda pictures are out of print, maybe Criterion will bring it to the UK because they've actually released Down by Law and uh, Dead Man in the UK, I think. So maybe they'll bring this one too. So maybe I'll wait for a bit and see. Yeah, but a great film. I would highly recommend this to anyone. Then we have a. Lee Chang Dong film Oasis. This is one that I've talked about like briefly in many different occasions on my channel. So this is this by the way I think used to be on YouTube too, so see the links down below again. Uh, but this is one of his earlier films, it's from 2002. It's about this weird guy who we don't really again know what 
what is wrong with him fuck like i've said this sentence so many times on this channel and then we have this woman who has cerebral palsy but this man and this woman they develop this connection like after a very weird sequence of events like i don't want to spoil it but there's like this guy does this like horrible thing but somehow these two like still like manage to connect after that and it has very interesting ending too and this guy is actually very interesting because at the same time he kind of seems, seems evil in a way and he does these kind of questionable things let, let's put it mildly and but somehow we kind of as the film progresses and when we see him kind of develop this connection with this woman who has this cerebral palsy like we somehow we kind of start to like him after that even though we've seen him do these questionable things so i think that's very interesting way to build a character and the audience's relationship with that character so at first we kind of like who the fuck is this guy but then in the end we are yeah go 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 we love you we love you man <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah this is such a such a great film and again another one that should be on blu-ray in the west i think this has maybe some blu-rays in the in asia in korea or in japan or something but but i'm not sure but yeah let's move on so the next one is something that i really don't know how to talk about it but it's called a film called parsifal by hans jürgen superberg i'm pretty sure that's the name of the director sorry uh, but this is like a kind of an interpretation of wagner's parsifal opera but this is such an epic beautiful film again i guess if you like tales of hoffman by the archers i think you would maybe like this one too i think they, they're kind of a bit of the similar thing yeah but this was a film that i was really hyped about before i watched it and then i fortunately ended up loving it but a very unknown film it's on youtube i think but in a very bad print but that's how i watched it so okay this would be a magnificent film to get on physical media but to be honest i'm not holding my breath this is such an unknown film that and i don't think there would be a huge market for it so this is one of those films that i'm pretty sure that this won't get released but you never know someone like second run or second run or someone could put this up or maybe like scorsese's world cinema project this would fit that well because again scorsese loves the archers he probably loves tales of hoffman so maybe he would love this one too yeah by the way it's a very long one as well so it's not like an easy watch but yeah next one is by one of my favorite directors Ryan Renner Fassbinder it's Queerel his final film which is this kind of gay fantasy fantasy film and this is a film that I think if you are straight may, maybe you won't won't like get get all of it and by the way I like I hate saying stuff like that because I usually again go against this kind of identity stuff that you have to be this to appreciate this film or you have to be that to appreciate that film because I usually again I, I reject that type of view but this is kind of an exception where I think that that uh, again if you're straight you might not like it because it's all about this kind of gay gay fantasy yeah but um but I, I remember actually reading one review where this guy on letterbox said that he he's, he's straight and he loves this film to death and he doesn't understand how people say that only like lgbt people could, could like this one but but yeah again okay. <laughs> let's move on like like i feel like i'm really woke here yeah but it, it's good if you can appreciate it no matter your identity yeah fuck but it's i think it's a great film it was a great swan song for fast binder it's really sad how he had to die so early on but it's fucking amazing that he died when he was 37 but he left this type of filmography behind which is like up there with the absolute great cinema masters so just imagine if he had like another 10 years or 20 years of cinema yeah but let's go into a modern 
great Russian film. It's The Return by Andrei Zvorkinchev. So this film really blew me away. So it's about these two young brothers. They live with their mother. Their father has been gone a long time, but the father actually returns and he takes these two kids to a road trip. Um, uh, and then, then they again go this road trip and this father, we kind of, he has this kind of weird vibe about him and we kind of think that, yeah, this guy is probably like a huge piece of shit. Like he, he's not a good father, he's not a good guy. But this film is quite slow and we again see how, how this relationship slowly develops and how their trip slowly develops. But in the end they end up on this island. They take this boat there and there's this very interesting events that happen there too. And this has a great dark ending as well. But I really, really, really fucking love this film. I think I watched it uh, early last year. But this is like Again, one of the great Russian films to me. Again, I just love the atmosphere and the slow build-up. Really like the performances. And I again really like these types of characters that we kind of slowly find out what they're about and and yeah, and we, that, that that we can kind of keep guessing at first that is this guy a total piece of shit or does he have a heart to or yeah, what is his past? And we actually don't know much about what he was like before. We kind of get the vibe that he's some kind of a criminal, but we don't know exactly. I think yeah. So that was really interesting how they don't like sp spoil up, spoil his whole story, but we can just have to guess what type of guy he is from his actions and what he does in the film and stuff. Yeah. By the way, this video is apparently very long. I've actually talked more about these films than I thought beforehand. Although I'm kind of proud of myself that I've been able to talk about this a bit more than I thought in the. Uh, beginning. But the next one is one that I, I don't have much to say about it, but it's a Wojciech Haas film. It's the Saragossa manuscript. So it's an adaptation of that novel, I think. I don't actually know much about that novel, so correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, but this is a, I think, three hour film, if I remember correctly. It's one of Haas's like masterpieces. And this is one of those films, again, a very, very complex film. It's hard to again kind of see and crack through the surface that what is this film about. Again, I remember that it had like a pretty weird weird structure. But I remember at the same time I just really really loved it. Uh, this was actually recommended to me by Isaac. And yeah, I, I love this film. I love this film. But somehow I failed on watching some of his other films because I've been meaning to do that. The Hourglass Sanatorium or whatever that film is, that, that one I really want to see and there are a couple of others. But yeah, great film. Then a Nakisa Oshima film. Like I have it under T because the English title is Taboo. But I usually call this Gohatto because I think that is, that is the original title and I, I think Gohatto sounds cooler than Taboo. So yeah, but this was Oshima's last film. It was made in 1999. It's a samurai film, it's a queer sam samurai film, and I think I've said this before, but again, that just that concept alone that it's a queer samurai film, like it's again, it feels like very bold and very different. Yeah. And it has Takeshi Kitano or Pete Takeshi as one of the main actors, and he's great in it. And it's about this like samurai, and there's this one pretty, pretty boy samurai, and Somehow all these other samurai like want to fuck him, <laughs> like it's very weird plot. It's kind of some like again we in the sixties we we had Harakiri that take the, took a piece on the samurai code and stuff, and this this kind of does the same thing but in a very different way, and I just love it to death. And this one I also had to watch on quite a way bad print. I think the aspect ratio, if I remember correctly, was quite weird as well. So again, not a film that would be great for third window or. Criterion or BFI or whatever, but again, I'm not holding my breath. But would love to see it. Would love to see it. But yes, yeah, such a such a great film. Then a few more to go. Umberto D for the letter U. So this is uh, Vittorio De Sica film, as you probably know, it's like his 
second most famous film after The Bicycle Thieves. Um, and it's kind of that similar thing as well, again, neorealist stuff, it's about this old man. Does he like get unemployed on this? I don't remember, it's been a while, but we see him kind of wandering through, wandering through the streets and he's being kind of treated like shit by other people. And he has this dog, but it's a beautifully shot film, again, okay? great performance by this old guy and yeah, it's just a kind of one of the great neorealist films. I, I remember I really loved almost everything about it, but again, it's not very fresh on my memory, so let's move on. Then we have another fast spinder film, and this one actually has escaped me for a large part, even though fast spinder films usually stick on my head pretty well, but this one has escaped me, even though again, I remember that it's a masterpiece, but it's Veronica Voss. It's, I think, it's part of the BRD trilogy that you can get on Criterion, for example. So Lola, this one, and then Marriage of Maria Brown. Um, but yeah, it's a, again one of his best films. It's one of his later films. I think it, this came out in 82 and Queerel, I think, was 83. So one of his absolute last films, but a great one. Then a Japanese film by Hiroshi Teshikahara, Woman in the Dunes. This one I've seen twice. And this one was actually one that in, the, in my first viewing I kind of found it. I found it good but slightly like overlong and maybe a bit tedious at times. But on the second watch I really got the, what it was going for, for that kind of meditative atmosphere, that great cinematography, all the kind of weirdness of it. And this is based on a Gobo Abe novel I think, which I need to read sometime. Again, I, I really want to get into Japanese literature more. I've read some Kawabata, but I want to read Mishima and Kobo Abe and Genchapura Oe and Osamu Dachai and all the great and the Tale of Genji, obviously. And yeah, but anyway, this isn't about Japanese literature. Um, but yeah, a great, great film. Don't have too much to say about it though. Then we'll end in the letter Y because I couldn't find a letter Z film. So this is Year of the Hair, again Finnish film about this guy who gets bored of the city life and wants to move to Lapland. He finds this hair, they, takes the hair and then tra travels with him to the Lapland. They actually show my hometown, a small hometown called Heinola in this film. Although actually when they see like a couple of scenes from Heinola they show in this film, like I actually don't re recognize it even though I lived there for 20 years. So I'm not actually sure whether they actually shot it in Heinola, even though they say it's in there. But obviously this film was in the 70s, so maybe it looked a bit different there. But although the buildings are old enough that they should have been there, the same buildings then as they are now. So yeah, I'm, I'm a bit... I'm bit, I, I'm kind of bit conflicted about whether they actually showed it there or not, and I think I couldn't find the information online either. But also the print wasn't the best, so maybe if it was like full HD or 4K, maybe then I would have seen it. And I think they also mentioned the city where I live now. But this is such a great road movie, and again, I I like these kind of nature films. Yeah, and that. Antti who plays the main role, he actually died fairly recently here in Finland. Yeah, but he was a very well-known actor here. Yeah, but again, this is something that I mean, Isaac watched it. It has a version with English subtitles, but it's really hard to find. It's actually way easier to find that book, which is this is based on a Arthur Basilinna book, and I saw that one on Waterstones in London, like the main Waterstones in Piccadilly Circus. So, so you can get that book, but I don't, I'm not sure whether you can get the film very easily. Yeah. But anyway, th those were my choices. Again, there wasn't a choice for num uh, letter Z, unfortunately. Like I'm fucking hungry now. I really need to end this video. Again, hopefully the murmuring, my stomach murmuring didn't get picked up by the mic. Yeah, but I'm really hungry. I haven't eaten all, all day and it's already the evening. Yeah. But anyway, thanks for watching, 
check out the links in the description again if you want to watch these films. I'm sorry that this video ended up being this fucking long again, even though I said that this is gonna be the shortest one, but it's like the second longest one so far. But anyway, thanks for watching. Let me know your choices. I don't drink all the coke, watch some great cinema, and ciao.